Hello and welcome to the Happy 4PR podcast. I'm here today with author John Sadiq. Hello John, how are you today? Hi Fiona. So tell us a little bit about your background and why you've decided to do the authentic workshops. Well it depends what you mean by background really I suppose. There's so many ways you can kind of look at that but in terms of the context of this I was a strange kid you know. It's not my entire life story but I was a strange kid and I picked up a book at the age of 14 by Stephen Levine called The Gradual Awakening. And I knew at that age that I had to meditate and uh, that I was completely different from the rest of my family. And not in an ego way, but I was just a different being to the, these other people. And I started doing that. And I think oh, from the age of 14 to sort of 48, 49, I've made every mistake that it's possible to make quite honestly and got so many things wrong in that world and one seeks freedom as it were you know people talk about being free and uh, you know when they retire they'll be free and when this happens they'll be free but always inside myself I was asking the question you know what's real what is real you know and and um, and and we can we can do so many things as kind of add-ons to life and yet still feel like where are we inside that and about two years ago things started changing the, 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 I, I decided to kind of look at the work I was doing in a very different way. And I had a, a kind of sense, really, that I needed to kind of look at, you know, kind of connecting to, to sort of the core of myself. And what I mean by that is sort of the basic energy of the body, the basic life force. And, um, and I started kind of doing that. And I, and I realised that the thing that was getting in the way is it was kind of like old emotional blockages, you know. And we all have that. We kind of accrue like stuff as we go through life and we kind of like resist and keep our hands out so that we don't get hurt again that it was by letting this stuff go that one would actually find your way through to the basic energy and come home and um and it started to work i'm just a a, a traveler on the path there's something in me that's saying show other people this show other people this stuff not that i have the right answer if by talking about this somebody finds a resonance in themselves with it Uh, then it was theirs already. There seems to be very few people kind of talking about this kind of work. It's almost like we do meditation and things trying to kind of bypass the emotional life or uh, we're trying to kind of cut our life off as if it never existed. We have a paradigm in, in our Western society of the battle, the battle against cancer, the battle against mental illness, the battle for this, that, the other. But actually all that is doing is creating tension and fighting. You know, it doesn't bring us home to love. And love is what we want. So tell us a little bit about the workshop, the title of the workshop, and what we can expect from the workshop. Well, the workshop's just called simply Living Your Authentic Life. And it's over two days. And on the first day, we're going to look at a kind of true meditation practice, or you know, which kind of goes back a long, long way. Kind of, I was trained in Zen, and uh, and it kind of has a kind of Zen basis. But I'm also I, I was initiated as a yogi many years ago, so there's some some stuff from that too. But it's also what I've been working on in the last couple of years with my own practice, and it's just about not being caught up with one's thoughts and emotions so much that we're more than those things. Of course, those things are there, but then there's there's something of us eternal and infinite in its potential as well and connecting to that source so day one we're going to look at that not just going to look at it because the ego can't really look at it and understand it we're going to do it and then on day two we're going to look at a really powerful technique which allows us to communicate with our emotions or more importantly allow them to communicate with us so we don't resist them because what we resist persists and it rhymes so that has to be true so letting go of the resistance to emotion and then actually accepting the messages that are trying to communicate with us to actually move us on with our lives properly and bring us home back to our authentic life. And what people will take away from that then after is I hope that uh, a kind of a, a fuller sense of themselves. And, and like I say, I don't believe that I'm coming from a right answer sort of place. The reason that it's a workshop is that everybody has something to contribute to it. You know, I'll be, le- I'll be actually learning just as much, if not more. I, I learn lots uh, when I talk to people. But there is this voice, there is something, a wind in my sails or something, just saying, show people, take this to people. Is there any homework that I need to do, any any preparation I need to do before I come on the workshop? No, not really. 
Not really at all. You know, what do I wear? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean... Any equipment that I need to yeah, bring? Yeah. Any, you know, yoga yeah. mat or anything yeah. like yeah. that? No, no, no yoga mat. But um, if, if you dress nice and loose, mm-hmm. loosely and warm, that's very good. Uh, but you'll be feeding us up a nice soup and things for so keeping us warm. So that's cool. If people had a meditation stool or a meditation cushion, that would be wonderful. Uh, maybe a kind of light covering, like a kind of blanket or a wrap or something. And a journal and a pen to write in. Even though this is not a writing workshop, I find reflective journaling to be a really important tool in kind of connecting us to ourselves or doing dialogues with ourselves and stuff. And I think it would be really useful to, for, for people to have a little reflection time. I'll kind of give some ideas for that. It's based in Hebden Bridge. Yes. The heart of creativity. And you've been working on this practice for a while now. What have been the benefits for you? One of the first things that I notice is that I'm not scared of people anymore. I used to be very, very scared. And now I kind of see sort of the basic energy, the basic humanity of a person. It doesn't mean that that I have to accept their ego reactivity that they're creating and their drama. But I can let people be a bit more. I don't comment about them anymore in my head, things like that. So, And that lets me be. You know, I'm not so I'm not involved anymore. I'm not wanting to force change on the world that's not possible to make. And of course, then that leads to love. So I feel like I'm actually connected to the source of love inside myself a lot more of the time, a lot of the time. And I can actually meet people, even people that I may not like so much with instead of trying to create love inside myself, which is what I used to do. I actually find that there is just love. And that's just the kind of the beginning of it, really. But, I can, you know, I could say it's much, much more than that. But from fear and trembling and kind of not kind of, um, you know, not being connected at all to kind of a basic sense of love about the world is, is, is a big thing. And I think, I think that, that's what, it's not, that's not what I want to take people to take away. Well, I do. This is one of the paradigms or one of the kind of problems of society that we have, that there's a story that love is outside of us. And that we're programmed with that from the first day of our life. Love is outside every pop song, every film, every book we read. It's all about drama and trying to acquire love from outside and pull it in. When we're already made of love. And all we have to do to get, stop resisting so much, you know. Especially in the emotional area. And just come to a centre. It's about what's on the inside and the relationship with what is on the inside. And in the two days, we're going to be connecting to that listening to that, learning about techniques. I believe that you're going to be going through um, a technique called focusing and um, meditation and things like that. So when we leave the workshop, we're not left alone with our thoughts and our feelings. You're giving us techniques within the workshop. Absolutely. Practical techniques within in the workshop. So we can then use them on from that. Is there going to be any kind of forum or anything like that? Or, or can we... After the two days, is there any way we can contact you again and maybe book in any kind of consultation or session? Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm really happy to do consultations, either sort of over Skype or something like that, or one-to-one. Yeah. I'm very happy to do that with people. The, the nature of this work that it is, uh, is kind of very self-selecting in a way. The people who will come on it, we will be in touch. That's the way it's naturally going to be, I think. There's no feeling of like you know off you go sort of thing that's not about what this is about at all it's just about fellow travelers meeting and and kind of really sort of knowing that there are other people out there also doing this work because that's one of the terrible things when we're trying to make progress we think we're on our own we're not on our own there are people out there doing this that's great so tell us when the workshop is the workshop is on the 21st and 22nd of february And what do we need to do to book? Uh, If you come to my website, which is www.johnsiddique.co.uk and if you click on the page that says Authentic Living, there's information about the workshop and a lovely button that says Pay. So Mm -hmm. you can do that. And if people have got any questions, they can email me at js at johnsiddique.co.uk. Brilliant. Thank you very much, John. Thank you, my love. Take care. If you'd like to know more about John Sadiq, go to www.johnsadiq.co.uk. Thank you for listening.